So I wanna share with you what I've learned after a few hours of riding a drop through longboard. So this is a Land Yacht Switchblade 40. This is what my vehicle of choice was. I had it set up symmetrically on 50-50 uh, caliber raked, raked caliber threes and the long distance pushing alphas. Um, I find that riding things with not much grip on drop through setups can be pretty scary. It can be very hard to take corners with much control. Now you see there's a lot of dust in that corner and it is gonna affect me here because one thing that was really prevalent during this entire session is that the board is really prone to oversteering. As you can see through the entire toe side corner there, the board, as I manage to get it back underneath me, it just wants to oversteer again and I get in this feedback loop of almost wobbling through the corner. Now, Maybe it comes as no surprise, but sliding drop through boards is very easy. There's not much, oh, look here, look here. So there's kind of this um, pattern of oversteer, kind of get it under control, oversteer, get it under control. That's really kind of my fault here. I think one of the most profound things was how delicate you have to be on a drop through setup. Your inputs have to be very precise and very gentle. It's really easy to overload the wheels because you're so low to the ground, your feet are really low relative to the axle. Any sideways force you push into the wheels is gonna result in some loss of traction. Whereas a sideways force on a top mount may actually cause the wheels to dig more. That wasn't the case here. Now, I got way too much on my back foot when hooking up that slide and it almost threw me. I think Keeping front foot pressure is really important on toe side glove down slides with a drop through board. Um, especially as you hook up, I think you have to balance pushing out with the front foot with retracting the back foot. On a top mount board, I find that I can really just swing out my back foot and then retract my back foot, essentially using the front truck as a pivot point in order to hook the slide back up reliably. That just wasn't true here. Um, another issue I kind of found was it's easy to get stuck in the heel side slides. It's really easy to kind of get your weight a little too low and a little far back and just be along for the ride until you can manage to regain control of the slide. Um, you really, in order to get the right control, you have to be very deliberate about your input during heel side slides. You have to be very much on top of your board and you have to have kind of the lower body isolation and flexibility to be able to snap that board out and snap it back in. Now I had no problems with stability on this board, all the bumps and cracks, nothing really gave me any issues. Um, and you can see here's another situation where I got stuck in that heel side slide. The board just wanted to oversteer, 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 especially as I got low, especially as I grabbed rail. Grabbing rail brought my body weight really far up on the board. It brought it um, much closer to the front foot instead of keeping it balanced between the front and back foot like I should have. And it didn't apply the right pressure to the back wheels and it let them slide on the pavement, getting me in kind of this death slide that brought me tighter and tighter into the curb until I just had to bail. So if I were to take that corner again and do it right, I would have my feet balanced front and rear on the deck. I would not grab rail. I would try to sit very squat between the two, very evenly, trying to make sure that my pressure is smooth and even on the front and rear wheels. I found that riding a drop through board was really exhilarating. It was so much fun to kind of rewire my brain to adapt to this new style of longboard. And, you know, maybe there are some changes I would make, like putting in a lower degree rear truck. I feel like might kind of dampen the oversteer tendencies that the board has. But also I feel like there's an element to riding this drop through longboard, big wheelbase, symmetrical trucks. That is just something to be appreciated on its own. There's only so much you can try to correct about a setup until you end up making it feel the same as every other board you ride. One of my philosophies is just being able to ride everything makes you a good skater. Being able to have, you know, a wide variety of boards, boards that all feel different, that respond differently, that require different techniques and re require you to adapt um, is really kind of the mark of a very good 
skater. In my opinion, that's what I kind of idolize are riders like Will Royce that can just kind of throw down on anything from a dancer to an e-skate to a downhill board, any wheels, any day. Me kind of going on this journey to understand the dynamics of doing downhill on a drop through is part of my own mission to be kind of apt, to be well, uh, not only well spoken, but well versed at just about any setup. And learning how to ride this board well, it's not only gonna teach me things to apply to riding a top mount, but also give me better insight on how to advise other people on gear, what to buy, how to ride it. Um, this board is not gonna stay in my collection forever. Um, I feel like it would not exactly get the, the time under my feet that maybe my other setups would get but owning it for this brief amount of time, trying my best to ride it and understand how it works uh, is absolutely an exercise I can recommend to anybody. You learn so much and it does make you a better, more proactive skater. It makes you think while you're riding a little more. Instead of going into kind of the, the kind of passive, mindless flow that you get when you're kind of in your comfort zone. If you're interested in a review of the Land Yacht Switchblade, let me know. Uh, but if you would like to hear me break down this board, uh, I think that could be pretty fun. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you kind of gained something from this. If you have had a similar experience of riding a board that is completely different from your own and having to very consciously adapt your riding style and to monitor your technique to make sure it's working with the equipment that you have, let me know, kind of tell your story down in the comment section. Every board is different, every board is special, and I think riding boards that are drastically different than what you currently, you know, what, what's your regular, what's your everyday ride, is so valuable and fun. Again, this was one of the most thrilling experiences that I've had on a longboard recently, and in this same week I've gone, you know, 46 miles an hour down a, a twisty back road. This was way more exciting. This was way more fun. Thank you so much for watching and I really appreciate you.